Fuva Wula is one of the few places in the world where you can actually do recreational diving with huge tiger sharks. And this time, we would like to go a little bit more into detail what is actually happening behind the scenes when you see all of those shark dives uh, on social media here. <laughs> Let's see. They come to worship you. They come to hear the truth. Why go to Wichita? When Panda and Tatiana first started the whole fuzz about the tiger sharks here and started the diving, it was pretty remote. I think at that time there weren't really regular flights to the island even. Now you have 10 dive shops and you have a ton of liverboards also coming here. So there's a huge momentum about this place. And we are super happy to see that now the dive shops tend to work together more. It's also about finding scientific conclusions about the tiger sharks, because if you have a place where there's such a huge traffic of tiger sharks coming in, it is also a very good opportunity to study them. And we had no clue how deep all of this study is supposed to be going over the years. And we're super thrilled that now, talking to Lenny, we find out what is actually going on here. I was doing my master's thesis in Germany and I was looking for a place to do research for my master's degree. And this is when Tatjana contacted me and she said, we have this huge aggregation of tiger sharks and we need someone to come and do the scientific work that we don't have the capacities to do. So this is when I decided, okay, this is a great chance to analyze the population of tiger sharks that we have there. I stayed in Fuvamula for one year and was in the water every day taking the photo IDs but also looking at the past footage from the last like seven years. This work actually originated from Tatjana's and Panda's idea because they will catalog all these videos and pictures because Tatjana she knew one day we're gonna go through all of this and we will understand this population. Go. I basically tried to identify every single individual to get an idea of how long do they stay, um, how many are there in total, or is it maybe always new sharks. Go. Our first discovery was that this population is unprecedentedly large. So until today we have identified around 250 different individuals. So this has not been documented anywhere else. We started measuring the sizes of the tiger sharks with laser photogrammetry because they're exactly parallel. You can hold it onto the shark and see these two dots and know, okay, this is 60 centimeters on the shark. And then you extrapolate it onto the entire size of the animal. Jamie is still using it today. And the other thing is that it's around 85% females and you see them getting pregnant. I remember when I was watching Nuha, in the end she looked like she's going to explode and then she left. And then after three months she came back, lost half of her body mass. So probably she has gone somewhere to give birth and came back to Fuvamula afterwards. We've seen full cycles of reproduction and most of them reproduce every two years and before it was thought that they reproduce every three years. So this means they reproduce faster, which is very good news because it means they are more resilient towards fishing pressure. And then I left and at the same time, Jamie came to start collecting the data while I was sort of in the background writing up the first study on the tiger shark population in Fuwamua. The reason that sharks and rays are protected in Maldives in general is that people come to watch them and they pay a lot of money. Without the recreational diving, the study that we are conducting would not have been possible, especially Fuba Mula Dive School 
they are always hiring a marine biologist who's in the water all the time and the funding for that is generated through the tourism. Because of all the media that is being created and all the money that is brought in, it's an economic incentive for the government to keep it going and to keep the ecosystem alive. So I think one of the big questions now is if this can be regulated in a way that this can keep happening forever. So back when I was there, they started founding a diving association, basically an association where all the dive centers come in to organize stakeholder meetings. And this has continued ever since. Shark populations around the world are unfortunately disappearing. And there's a few protected areas around the world that allow these sharks to still thrive. And Fubamula is one great example that is relevant for the global conservation of tiger sharks. And of course, the tiger sharks are not the only interesting subject that you have on the island. Compared to the other islands of the Maldives, this is a solitary island in the deep south where there is not much around. So the water gets deep and there is multiple interesting species that appear here like oceanic mantas and oceanic white tips or whale shark. And also there is a population of thresher sharks around the island. And it would be so perfect if in the future there would be some grants and some money for scientists to actually come here, continue the study for the tiger sharks, and maybe even study also the population of the treasure sharks here.